ka -chow. What's poppin', fellow nerds? It's your boy, Jimmy, back again after a short hiatus. Can you imagine if I actually spoke like that? Um, hi, it's Jimmy here, I'm back. And I took a little break because I was having some mental health stuff and you guys have been really supportive, so thank you first of all to everyone who sent me wonderful messages of support and new patrons on the Patreon who've turned up when I'm on hiatus and said, hey, everything's cool, don't worry about it, and people who've sent me coffee donations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dialch, dialch, dialch or galon. Um, thank you ever so much to you guys, you're amazing. Um, let's talk about runes. <laughs> So as you can tell, it is hot and sweaty in my flat, so welcome back to Outdoor Jimmy for the first time in like... 18 months? A year? It's been a while since I last did an outdoor video, right? I'll probably hunt through my back catalogue and figure out which was my last outdoor video. But whilst I was sweating in my hot, humid flat, a friend sent me a picture of someone that they had come across on a dating website who had a pretty bad tattoo. and. It wasn't just badly executed, it was also meant to be a Viking tattoo, saying his name, uh, which we won't mention, but it used a Nazi rune. And this got me thinking and it started the conversation. People know they were different runic alphabets, right? And we decided that it might be worth making a video to explain that yes, there is more than one runic alphabet. There is more than one Futhark, and some of them are really bad. So, we're just going to dig into a few of the things to bear in mind to avoid getting a really bad, potentially racist tattoo, and a few of the things to bear in mind that might really help inspire you to get a great tattoo. And wait for this guy to walk past. So what evidence do we actually have of Old Norse tattooing? The answer is, unfortunately, absolutely none. What we do have is Ibn Fadlan's report that the Rus, over on the Volga, all the way over there, were wearing their entire bodies covered with tattoos of trees. Does that mean that they were covered in acanthus vine motifs and pictures of Yggdrasil? Does it mean that Ibn Fadlan was exaggerating? <gasps> A medieval author exaggerating to make other countries seem weird? No! Does it mean that this particular group of Rus that he was with did have people who were really heavily tattooed? We don't know. We certainly don't have any actual evidence from the Norse up in Scandinavia for tattooing. We don't have any archaeology of tattooing. We've got no evidence whatsoever. We do know that earlier Germanic and Celtic people, according to a Roman source, were wearing tattoos. We think the Romans were tattooing themselves and the Greeks were tattooing themselves as well. And we know that a long time prior, in the Bronze Age, people in Northern Europe were tattooing themselves. But as for whether this is a continuous, unbroken tradition, we don't know. We certainly don't know what their tattoos looked like if they were using tattooing. We do have a source from later Anglo-Saxon England which says that if you're getting tattooed for any other reason than to praise God, that's not a good thing to do. So. It seems like it was happening. It's not the sort of thing that you complain against if it wasn't happening, right? So there are lots of things to avoid if you're going to get a Viking Age runic tattoo. And the most obvious thing to avoid is the wrong runes. There are at least four different runic alphabets that are legitimate historical runic alphabets. You have the Elder Futhark, which is in use from the second century at least, right the way through into the eighth century, and then it peters out very, very quickly before the Viking Age really starts. We have a couple of Elder Futhark runes on inscriptions in the Viking Age that we think were probably ciphers or, you know, hidden things or just somebody's initials. Then you have the Younger Futhark, which is different from the Elder Futhark in a couple of ways. One, the Elder Futhark has 24 runes, the Younger Futhark has 16 runes. Two, this was the one that was actually used in Viking Age Scandinavia, and it's the one that all of the runestones are in. And this is the one you want to get if you are getting a Viking Age runic tattoo. Then there are also later medieval Scandinavian runes, which are not Viking Age, uh, and there are different runes, here are some of them, that were used for things like writing full books, transcribing copies of religious texts, and that kind of thing. And these are in use much, much later than the Viking Age. Again, not Viking runes. Then, there are the 20th century 
very, very bad runes, and there are some runes that were made up by a chap called Guido List. Don't you mean Guido Von List, Jimmy? No, I do not, because Guido List decided to add Von to his name in 1903 to make himself sound more ar aristocratic, so screw that guy. Um, Guido List made up some runes to help support his uh, weird, theosophical, frankly, out-and-out racist, anti-Semitic ideas of this unified German culture. And this is something that happened in the early 20th century, where later 19th century philosophies really start propounding this idea of an ancient, superior Germanic race. And it's all made up nonsense, but Guido List really takes it and runs with it, and unfortunately a lot of his ideas are still around today usually with the overt racism and anti-Semitism neatly taken out of them. Um, but he was a colossal anti-Semite, not a cool dude. And these, again, are runes to avoid. Some of his runes, called the Armanen runes, are just Younger and Elder Futhark. Some of them are made up by him. Either way, if you use the ones made up by Guido List, you are using completely made up runes from the 20th century, that have extremely problematic origin stories. Moving even further ahead, you have another colossal nerd who used his powers for evil, which is Karl Maria Villigut. And Karl Maria Villigut was a wife-beating psychopath who was declared legally incompetent, I'm not far off myself, and abandoned his wife and children to move to Germany and become a literal Nazi. He was in the SS, he was a colonel in the SS, and he was partly in charge of faking Germanic history to justify the idea that white German people were supermen. In actual fact, he was an ugly great idiot, and he made up some more runes. The runes he made up are also either mirrored or just taken from the Elder and Younger Futharks, or they're some of Guido List's runes that have been messed with a little, or they're just made up by him. And they suck, and don't use these runes. The final kind of runes that you want to definitely not use are just the Nazi insignia runes. Google Nazi insignia, Google runes used by the Nazis, I don't want them on my channel, so I'm not putting them on my screen. Avoid, avoid, avoid these ones, and unfortunately, one of these is one of the ones that this guy with a tattoo had. And if you have these runes on your tats, you are immediately outing yourself as a racist. No matter how you market yourself, no matter how you try and justify it, if you have these runes on you, you are wearing Nazi runes. So just don't do it. Losers wear Nazi insignia. I mean, Pokemon has been around longer than the Nazi regime in Germany, so, you know, get a Pokeball tattoo instead. It seems really lame, doesn't it, that these people had to make up basically Tolkien-level world-building just to try and justify their hatred for certain ethno-religious groups. I mean, why didn't they use their powers for good? Why didn't they just invent a cool role-playing game and write some awesome fantasy novels before it was cool? Like, they could have gone the Tolkien route with it, they could have written an amazing story with wicked cool characters and, like, excellent alphabets that they never tried to pretend were real, and just used their powers for good. Why, why? 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 They were nerds, but they were bad nerds. Only use your nerd powers for good, my friends. Only use your nerd powers for good. Be a good nerd. When we talk about some of the stuff like the weird Germanic philosophy th stuff at the end of the 19th century, I find this stuff weirdly fascinating, so if you'd like me to do a full video exploring that, I've done one on Vikings and white supremacy before. It is a really fascinating subject. The origins of it in stuff like 17th century magic and mysticism I find really interesting as well. So if you would like a video on that, let me know. And if you guys have seen any weirder stuff, like egregiously bad tattoos using runes, do let us know in the comments. So the whole point of this video is what to avoid and also what you can do if you want a good runic tattoo. And it seems really obvious, but look for actual Viking Age runes. <laughs> Like, there are so many artefacts from the Viking Age with runic inscriptions on them, and there's a lot of bunkum and nonsense about how runes are used in magic. In actual fact, they're very often just used as letters with sounds attached. And yeah, a couple of them seem to have maybe been used as magical symbols in their own right, very rarely, but 
you can find rune stones with curses and spells written on them and dedications and prayers to the Norse gods. And if that's your jam, then super cool, do it. But look for some inspiration from the period. I have a friend who does tattooing and I'm going to link to his art and his Instagram down in the description and he does amazing work based off artifacts from the Bronze Age and the Iron Age and the Viking Age and they look fantastic and they look real because they are from those periods. They're actually taken from the people you're trying to emulate and if the point of your tattoo is to try and emulate or honour these people, this doesn't really do it. But this does because it's using stuff that they would recognise, it's using art forms and letter forms that they would recognise themselves and that had meaning to them. So go for them. Try and go for that instead of the weird looking badly rendered wolf. There are things that aren't runes um, like the 17th century Icelandic magical staves which are patently Christian European magical staves. Um, similar staves are used all over Europe in the medieval period. They almost all come with instructions for how to pray to the Virgin Mary, which literally the Helm of Awe comes with instructions for how to pray to God and Jesus to make it work. Um, it would not be recognised by a Norseman of the early medieval period. The Helm of Awe mentioned in the early medieval period was probably a helmet, not this. This is not Viking Age. No matter how hard you try to argue that it is, it isn't. It is a Christian European stave of a kind we have dozens of. So avoid these because it will very quickly point you out to someone who has no idea about Norse mythology and runes and do try to avoid mixing the Elder Futhark and the Younger Futhark if you want a Viking, like a solidly, this is a Viking Age tattoo. Don't mix the Futharks, that's not really something we see very much and a lot of them don't work together. The Anglo-Saxon Futhark Similarly, try not to mix that with the Elder or the Younger Futhark because it is a different alphabet for a different language. So, do you want Proto-Norse, Old Norse or Old English? These are three separate languages, they use three separate Futharks. If you are going for a medieval or early medieval tattoo that doesn't need to be Norse, use Latin or Arabic. Another thing that you can look at is the wealth of archaeology that we've got. We've got databases, we've got dictionaries of Old Norse, there are subreddits that you can go on, but bear in mind that if you decide to get your name or a type of animal tattooed in runes, if you transliterate that name, it will not read properly in Old Norse, necessarily. If your name is Dave and you get d a v e that says Dave, not Dave. If you decide to have the word bear tattooed on you in runes, don't do this, because that doesn't say bear. Bear is Bjarn in Old Norse, so get Bjarn. It seems really obvious, but somebody literally put this up on Reddit without knowing that it wasn't actually bear in Old Norse. So do bear in mind, English is a different language to Old Norse. I shouldn't have to say that, but... It's something that you overlook if you're excited by the design or you're a bit drunk when you decide to get the tattoo. Please don't get your tattoos when you're drunk, especially if they are runic tattoos and you don't know if it's a real rune or a Nazi rune. <laughs> Avoid that! So look at inspiration from the period. Look at the archaeology. We have all kinds of artifacts with runic inscriptions on them and some of them are super nice and they're blessings and they're prayers to Odin and things like that. Some of them are curses which maybe would do you more harm than good if you had them inked but just take care. Just be careful with this stuff because it's super easy to make a mistake. Maybe have a look at some of the motifs on some of the stones or the crosses that we have and then go from there. And if you want to mix stuff, like you want to mix the Old Norse religion with Christianity, they did that, you can do that. Why not follow some of the crosses that we have, where we have Christ on one side and Fafnir on the other? Something really cool like that. Or look at some of the dragon motifs on rune stones that have runes inside the dragon's body as it snakes along and then has a dragon head at the end. Right? Pretty damn cool. So. Yeah, that's what I would say. Look at actual period stuff from the period and the culture that you're trying to celebrate. And don't get Ogham, because Ogham is not Old Norse runes. I've seen people say that this is an Old Norse rune for a month of the year. It's not. It's Ogham. Ogham is a different language. 
using a different letter system, so don't do that. In fact, we do have a medieval Irish text that calls runes Ogum Lachlanoch, which means Viking Ogum, the Viking alphabet. It's pretty cool. But um, yeah, Ogum, not a Norse thing, an Irish thing. And to a very much lesser extent, a Welsh and Scottish thing, but it's an Irish thing. Check it out, it's a really cool writing system. So if any of you guys have any other tips on avoiding bad runes when you're getting a tattoo, if any of you have any experience of getting a runic tattoo you later regretted and you're happy to share it with the internet at large, pop it down in the comments because what we're trying to do here is protect people, save people from a fate worse than death, which is to get an embarrassing tattoo. So please do feel free to share some of that stuff if you've got any. I'm so Welsh, I am not built for this. Anything above 20 degrees is just awful. I'm just going to hang my armpits out to dry for a moment. Oh, this is actually really nice. Oh, this is so nice. I'm getting so many looks. Admiring looks. For my practicality. Oh. Oh, vile. Dear Chamaud, in my theta, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed reading up on the runes. In fact, do your research, because the research is part of the fun for this, right? It's a nerdy thing to do. It is nerdy. Getting runes tattooed on you is nerdy. No matter how badass and heavy metal you think it is, it's pretty nerdy to get a thousand-year-old language tattooed on you. So, do the research. I enjoyed it. I think you'll enjoy it too. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Till the next time. Bye for now. Oh, I'm so sweaty. fine paste every time I walk. Big shout out to the ancient dog that just really slowly took his time walking past me as I was filming, so huge respect to him and to the owner who was just stood smoking a pipe waiting for the dog to catch up. Excellent, very good.